Are the Utah Jazz ready to develop their young players? Now, I guess it depends on who you ask. Mm -hmm. I have been telling you that Walker Kessler and Keontae George, and I know I don't know shit about basketball. Just ask Well, you don't even watch jazz games. I don't watch jazz games. Yeah. Now, I believe that I have been advocating for Keontae George to be your starting point guard for I don't know how long. Weeks. How longer than that? Will Hardy, the head coach of the Jazz. Keontae is a big part of our program. Um, I think that playing with Lowry and John and Walker, all three of those guys need facilitators to get them the ball. And I think that um, to this point in pick and roll um, and even some of the off-ball stuff with Lowry, I think that Keontae has been a really good facilitator on the whole. Um, you know, Chris knows that his his role is still the same for our team. Um, it's still going to be about playing anywhere from 17 to 20 minutes and trying to guard the best player on the floor. Um, but I think that Keontae stepping into that role is ultimately what's best, you know, for our team moving forward. So let me get this right. <clears throat> trade deadline passes. You don't trade JC. Incredibly. You trade Olenek and Agbaji. And now you want to say it's time to start Keontae and Walker Kessler. Hmm. Hmm. I, I am I am at a loss. You got you got a boat raced by one of the floundering franchises in the NBA whose head coach was in Europe at a funeral. Steve Kerr did not coach last night. And you got crushed by 22 points. And you play key 29 minutes and he's a minus 32. You start Walker Kessler, who plays 26 minutes, 11 points, nine boards, and assists two steals, four blocks, and he's zero, like he's level. Right. These are your two guys that are your future, in my opinion. Walker Kessler and Keontae George, you see it already. They're special players. Hendricks is a project. Taylor Hendricks is going to be a project, but it's frustrating to me that we're in a situation. Now, listen, Steph Curry is an incredibly difficult player to, to handle. Mm -hmm. Their defense is abysmal on a nightly basis. The jazz, they're terrible defensively. What, what have you gained by not starting Keontae George and Walker Kessler? Because I don't understand it. And I know I'm just little old simp Monty. Right. I don't understand where this organization's going. I have no idea. Oh, wait. Yeah, I do. Ryan Smith is not going to spend money to win. Ryan Smith is not going to empower Danny Ainge to Ainge people. He is not going to spend money. He is not going to take on significant payroll. Because his his focus is not winning an NBA championship. Mm-hmm. His focus is bringing an NHL franchise to this city. His focus is trading away your veteran players and then using the development of his his youngs as an excuse as to why you don't win. And I don't think it was any accident that you traded your two most expensive players in Rudy and Don, then you hired a coach that was young and inexperienced. So let me get this right. You saved money on the Quinn Snyder move. Mm -hmm. You saved money on the Rudy and the Don move. And you have contracts in guys like Laurie Markkinen, who's got one of the most team-friendly contracts in the NBA. You don't have a superstar on your roster. You don't have a guy that's the best player on anybody else's team. And now you've decided that you should start Keontae George. Which is not Will Hardy's decision. I've talked to my jazz guy about this repeatedly. Right. Will Hardy has in-game control. He does not have he does not have starting five control. 
this was a core decision to start Keontae George now. And it, I, I, this is this season. My biggest fear for the Jazz is this season will go down as one of the great lost seasons in Jazz history. I just don't know what the goal was. Like, like uh, again, if you remember after the Don and Rudy trade, we got sold a package of, hey, yeah, we're gonna we're we're retooling, rebuilding, you know, and that's gonna be a a three to five year process. So here we are. And year one was nice. You overachieved. Like everyone felt good about it. It was year one. Didn't know any better. And year two, to me, hasn't really been much of anything. I mean, uh, yeah, you're hovering around 500. You had the like, one run. You had the one streak. Yeah, but like. Which was nice. But you're not a playoff team. You're not. This is not even a play-in team. There's no point in being a sacrificial lamb as a play-in team. And you've lost five of seven now. And you lit Clay Thompson on fire, who has not been hot for a year. Right. And this is a guy that's been benched in the fourth quarter. This is a guy who has not been able to hit water from a boat. And he came out last night and made you look foolish. And now the Lakers are here tomorrow, followed by Golden State, followed by Charlotte, San Antonio on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then you got to go Atlanta, Orlando, and Miami. Or excuse me, after the All-Star break. Yeah. You end the All-Star break with the Golden State game Thursday. Look, all I'm saying is that I, I just think it, it, it makes you as an organization look a little bit silly that you waited until after the deadline to start these guys. Like, it's one of the things I give San Antonio so much credit for. Right, and I know that Victor's a little bit different. Obviously, Keontae George is not Victor Wembanyama, but but the Spurs were like, yeah, we're we're going to draft Victor. We're going to play him as much as we can, and we're going to close that development window as fast as possible. That's what I think you have to do in the league. I don't know why you wouldn't. Hmm. I, there's no because there's no to not. there's no impetus for them to win now because it's expensive. Winning in the NBA is expensive. Yeah. It, you either do it this way or you go through what Oklahoma State's gone through, right? Where you spend an inordinate amount of time developing your talent. Yeah. Right. And you you look at their you look at the the roster, SGA, Jalen Chet, Josh Giddy, Lugan Stort, Kaysen Wallace. Yeah. You know, the major core of that team are their players that they've drafted and are developing. And it's working for them. And they're 36 and 17. Or you can be the timber puppies and you do the exact same thing, but you make some bad decisions along the way. And Anthony Edwards, Cat, you know, Jade McDaniels. And you also have Rudy Gobert, Nas Reed. So you develop your best players and you trade for the worst contract in the NBA and a leader in Mike Conley. So. Who's Just playing saying. 29 minutes for Minnesota, which is crazy. Yeah. I don't know. Do you, do, how long and how many years until the Jazz win a championship? It's at least another five. I think it's at least uh, another on, five. The only, and the only thing that changes that is Ryan Smith opening up the pocketbook to change the trajectory of the build. You would have to have a complete change in philosophy. Yes. At this point to win a championship and in the next five years. Your best point there is that it was it's a team decision now. It's an organizational decision to start Keontae now. And that's the part that bothers me the most. If this was Will Hardy being a young coach and he made this mistake and, you know, it was like, oh, hey, Will Hardy said not to and now he's saying to, that's different. But the fact that it was, you know, Jay-Z, Ainge, Will Hardy, I'm Beyonce. sure Ryan Be Smith Beyonce. was in the room, Beyonce, Botus. Uh, Botus, uh, the fact that it was the group of them that made this decision tells me one of two things is happening. Ryan Smith is not actually letting the basketball people do the basketballing or Danny Ainge just simply has lost his mind and doesn't mm. can't recognize a rebuild. Yeah, I don't know. Talking with Raphael podcast. Find it wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> uh, at what point does the player have to say enough is enough and take action on getting development on their own and not wait for a team? Or am I getting something wrong here? That's summertime. That's it's the old Donovan Mitchell thing. Go, go, summer runs. 
why is Devin Booker now one of the better defensive wing players in this league? Yeah. Because he, he spent an entire summer working on footwork. Why is Donovan Mitchell one of the most dominant players in an MVP candidate this year? Because he spends every single summer building his, his skill set. Always comes back with something new. That's why. But you're not wrong. In the summer, you got to do that. But the only way to win in this league at the development level, minutes. And a lot of them. Why is Walker Kessler in the Team USA USA basketball pipeline? Got a ton of minutes last year. Mm-hmm. People took note, right? To take note. So CBD did that. That was like a jazz reference, note. and it's Walker Kessler. Um, Keontae needs more minutes. Yeah. And he, the the other the other thing is, what do you do with Taylor Hendricks? Because he does not look ready for the NBA. How could he be? Because he's been in the G League all year. Yeah. I think you have to suffer with him, and he's got to play 20 minutes a night. Yes. Suffer. Let the pain sink in. Let him learn. Trial by fire, man. He, he, you know what I'm saying? Uh, wait, Jazz got Lowry, Kyle Lowry for Miami? No, he's going to the Sixers. Nope. Uh, if they would have tanked for Victor. Here we go. The Utah Jazz would have no problems, and they would be a complete meeting for home quarter Vanished throughout the playoffs if they would have dopped Victor. Victor's the way. They were never tanking for Victor. Yeah. Never. Uh, with the cap space, if they can trade a star f- this summer, when they can trade picks for salary like they did with Collins is the only way. But they're not, they don't want to take on big salaries. They don't. So I'm telling you, man, it's not Ryan Smith is not engaged on winning a championship. He's engaged on getting a hockey team to split a building with. That's what he's engaged in. Honest to goodness. Which, to me, I and I've pondered this. As an owner of an NBA franchise, I understand why you would want to try and pick up an NHL franchise to split a building with on some level. But you're new in the game. You're not like an old head who's been owning these teams for 50 years. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I would have thought that Ryan would have come in, bought the team, and said, okay, let me establish my knowledge and my ability to go out and win a championship and then go out and, and do these different things. Yeah. A couple more. Uh, Chris says Kyle Lowry got bought out and will sign with hometown team in Philadelphia. He'll probably retire after this year. I would think. Correct. Finally, Derek Roche. Just hot jits. Uh, you guys make me hate Ryan. Well, I don't think you should hate him. I think you should be disappointed in him. Yeah. And I think we should be honest about what he's actually doing. This is, but this is the danger of allowing a guy to completely control his own narrative in an entire market. Yeah. Ryan Smith owns Utah. Nobody will say a crossword about him. Nobody. The media will not call him out. The media will not ask tough questions. Oh. When they don't add a significant star of financial leverage, nobody will say why. They'll just write it off to, oh, he doesn't want to play in Utah. That guy doesn't want to be in Utah. That guy doesn't want to be in Utah. That's what jazz fans will write it off to. Not, we didn't want to pay the money and make a deal. We didn't want to pay a guy. Yeah. Well, we're developed. Larry Markkinen is the best player in the NBA who would be third on any championship caliber team. Monty, you don't know the jazz. You even watch jazz games? Nope, not one time. I've never, the Utah never. jazz, that never, sounds familiar. Dude. 